Welcome to the Rich Dad Stockcast with Andy Tanner. I'm Greg. I'll be your host. I'll be the one who uh, asks the stupid questions so Andy can answer them and we can all get smarter. <laughs> Today, oh, tell me that's not true. Today, we're uh, talking about the DNA of an investor. And really what that boils down to is how to kick ass in, in your asset class. I should, I should have said that more politically correct. Hold on, Andy. Kick in your asset class. That's in case kids are listening. So you got to you gotta take care of that. There you go. Speaking of, speaking of asset class, Andy, um, one of the things I noticed in your your courses is you don't just stick to stocks. You very often will use real estate in your examples, and and in zero to cash flow, I noticed that you did that a lot. Your that's the free course that you give every week. So you don't just say it's stocks or nothing. You say learn these cash flow principles, and you can apply them to every asset. And so I, I do think that's just another reason. We talk about this this course quite often because it is amazing and you do give it free, you're generous. But I think that's one of the, the great things. It doesn't matter what you're interested in learning about or investing. This course teaches you how to how to succeed in every asset class. I, I think one of the things I'm indebted to Robert for and, and Kim as well is when I became uh, – you know, when I started to become a student of Rich Dad, they talked about generalized principles a lot. And generalized principles, one of the definitions they gave me, as I remember it, is that, you know, this is true in all cases. And that by applying generalized principles, a person will get a, a certain result or the result they're supposed to get. And uh, and so, yeah, I think even in like the the stuff we offer in Zero to Cash Flow, uh, it, there's a lot of great generalized principles. I'm not a real estate expert. I own some. I invest in syndication. I have single family homes that that we rent to people, but not near like what a, what a Kenny would have or what a Kim and Robert would have, not even close. But I do think it's a great discussion to talk about asset class because I see a context that uh, I think can be approved upon more often than not. So that's yeah. we'll, we'll talk about it. Absolutely. You mentioned the, the generalized principles. One of those is the more people I serve, the more effective the more I become. Effective and that's I become. A, yeah. And that's kind of like what you're doing here by, by giving the free course. So everybody get the free course. I believe it's in the descriptions. Sarah producers is, is really good at that. And then Andy, I'm about to ask you, which is actually kind of on the, the same topic of this course about yeah. the DNA of an investor. Like, can you use that to pick your best asset class? And, and I got to read this, how to, kick your asset class man i don't know how to say that without swearing but i, I apologize <laughs> for that uh before we get it's, too deep with that though uh everybody hit subscribe so you can hear more andy please leave a comment tell andy you like his new haircut and um <laughs> and remember this is not financial advice this is financial education so don't just say don't just take whatever andy said and do it take what andy said and learn from it is that fair andy I think that's more than fair. All right. So let's talk about the DNA of an investor. And I'm not even trying to say the kicking your asset class part because I messed that up so bad. So is <laughs> okay. there is there a different DNA? Is there different characteristics, different personalities for based on is somebody better at stocks than real estate than business? You know, I, I'm not a social psychologist, so I don't know that I, I, I'll offer an opinion. I, I wouldn't like to say I know the answer to that. But I would just say this, this is a great opportunity to, to first tackle different asset classes. I loved your phrasing, actually. A long time ago, I was in Florida and, uh, you know, years and years ago, and they, they set me up on a panel. They asked me to be on this panel. I can't barely remember who all the guys were, but yeah, you kind of had the, the oil guy and you had the crypto guy and you had the gold guy and you had the real estate guy and you had the business guy. And I was supposed to be the stock guy, you know, and you got all these guys. And they thought it would be entertaining for us to debate on which asset class was best. And I hated that context. Robert is a master of context. I mean, that guy walks in a room and he sets the context or he reads the context. And he just understands that, you know, well, I think I learned in the Bible too, you know, the seed is always good. It's the ground that always has a problem, right? It's, it's where you're planting that seed. It's either too rocky or too shallow or too weedy or you know, whatever the Bible says about it. Uh, and so what did I do? Well, I changed the context. I did what I thought Robert would do. 
and here's here's the thing about the debate on which asset class is best. Like, you know, crypto guys will get in the comments that crypto is better than anything, or real estate's better than anything. And that context presupposes something I think's uh, worth talking about. Is success a function of an asset class chosen or is success a function of the personal development of the investor? And I think it's B, in my opinion. And the well, reason I think it's, well, go ahead. You had a comment. Well, Robert says the same thing. And actually, this was probably a decade ago in, in one of our team meetings. And he said, there's no such thing as a bad investment. He's like, get that out of your head. There is such thing as a bad investor. And that really did stick with me. Like a good investor can succeed in many, many ways, but a bad investment, I mean, a bad investor, you're never going to win in anything. Yeah. If you were to take each asset class one at a time, let's start with oil and gas and energy, and let's go to a family that has found success like the late T. Boone Pickens. Let's go to his posterity who's enjoying what he did. And we say, hey, he's a moron because, you know, well, you got the Saudis and you know, a dry hole over here and explore exploration versus expansion. And you, know, you start saying the you know, price is volatile. You start trying to poke holes in oil. Well, if you don't know, if you don't know how to poke holes in your own asset class, you probably know your asset class very well. If you don't know the hurdles and pitfalls, if I couldn't tell you what's wrong with stocks and what is challenging with stocks, I probably don't know what I'm doing very well. And so you'd have to tell the late T. Boone Pickens, you know, his family that grandpa was an idiot for getting into oil and gas. If you want to say real estate is, is moronic, you know, you got to knock on Kenny McRoy's door and say, oh, you got 2,000 doors or 10,000 doors now, I think it is. You know, you knock on, that's a, what are you cleaning, 10,000 toilets? That's ludicrous. That's silly. If you go to a uh, business, you got to tell people like Bezos, Jobs, and Musk are all idiots. And then if you really want to go after stocks, you have to go to the highest one of all. You got to go to Nebraska. You got to knock on Warren Buffett's door guy who never started a business, never started one. Uh, he's just bought them all. And, uh, and you got to say you're an idiot. You know, here's a guy who never had to innovate anything, but he controls 5% of the S&P now. Think about that. He controls 5% of our big business. In I mean, wow. it's phenomenal. He's the top of the mountain. You got to say, hey, little Warren, what are you, stupid or something? Stocks are silly. So I can also take each of those asset classes and I can find – a wasteland of dead bodies. <laughs> guys, guys and gals have just gotten killed in every single one of those asset classes. So I'm just going to submit for people's consideration. They don't need to agree with me. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. But I'm going to submit that you can find people that have gotten destroyed in crypto and people have done very well. You can find people who have gotten destroyed in precious metals and people have done very well. And I would just invite people to consider Yes or no, uh, can an idiot uh, make money in any of these? Probably not. There's probably going to be an education component and a personal development component in each and every one of these asset classes, ins and outs, things to study, hurdles and pitfalls, risk management in every asset class. And so the personal development, if you find success five years from now, <clears throat> you look back and maybe you got out of the rat race or whatever it was, and you look back and you find success five years from now, was it going to be because you got lucky and chose the right asset and that was it? You didn't need to learn anything? Or is it because of your own personal development in, in skills and, and in education? So to elevate the financial well-being of humanity, I think is more about your personal development than picking an asset. So there's my, <laughs> all right, there's all right, my, let me... my preaching on that or whatever you want to call it. So... so I'll agree. Well, of course, I'm going to agree with you because you're smarter than me. But I do want to not challenge you, but uh, maybe give you another point of view. Yeah. First, I'm going to agree in that. So I like stocks, right? Yeah. But at the same time, if I have, this has happened, I saw a great business opportunity. And I didn't say, I didn't say, oh, I got to skip that because I can only do stocks. So yeah. then I found myself doing both. But I will tell you, I hate real estate. Like it really? doesn't fit my personality. It is so slow and boring <laughs> and I, I hate it. Huh? Like you put your down payment huh? on, you get your renter in and guess what you do after that? Go to sleep. I, I mean, Robert would kill me for saying that, but it is I, so boring. 
see, I love real estate. I wish uh, I had more. My it, my yeah. wife loves it too, and she like we buy real estate. But then I here, let's buy real estate here. Go go do that because yeah. I hate it. Interesting. Well, he, here's the thought: What's the DNA of an investor for real estate? What's the DNA of stock? Well, here we have another context, another context question for us to consider. I don't know the answer to this one yet. I'll let people in the comments, you know, give their opinion because all I offer here, you know, I, I very much like to delineate when there's something I think I know from something I'm not so sure I'm right about. Okay, so this is in that gray area that I don't know if I'm right about this. It's just my opinion so far. I'm open to change it. Um, if we say that that you've got to find a real estate or you got to find an asset class that fits your DNA now, right? That what's a right. fit for you? Right. Well, that's a context that assumes that my DNA is set and that I can't change it. And I, I will tell you that I, in, like for example, uh, education wasn't my thing. Growing up in school, I hated school. I hated learning. I hated reading. I hated books. I hated teachers. I hate everything about school education, hated it. And so learning stuff isn't for me. So that would have put me in the advice culture, right? Like, I don't want to learn anything. Just tell me what to do. You know, give me the advice. And what I discovered is actually my DNA, either I discovered my real DNA, it was totally reconstituted because once I got out of school, <laughs> I learned I love to learn stuff. And even now, my wife and I, we, you know, we study like neuroscience now and we listen to podcasts about the brain and and once I got to choose the topic, uh, I loved it. So, you know, I think people can change. And so if I say, well, what's my DNA? I got to find some fits my DNA. You know, can I learn to, to eat my vegetables? You know, I used to hate vegetables. Now I kind of like them. And so, you know, can a person change their DNA? And, and I believe that a person can transform. Robert said something I thought was brilliant. Um, evidence of education is transformation, a reconstitution of your DNA. And so in people, it is what's funny. People hate change. If I say, you want to change? They say, no. And I go, do you want to improve? They say, yes. Well, what's the difference? Because <laughs> if, if I'm going to improve, that means I'm going to do things differently, right? And change. So, But what we could talk about, though, and I think maybe the answer is somewhere in the middle, Greg, is, there are certain things that personal strengths I have. Maybe after break, we can talk about those. But there's weaknesses I have and strengths I have. Uh, you know, we take Kobe tests and things like that to kind of guide into what might, uh, what might help. Like, I think Robert hates stocks because they're just really, really fast. It's a fast game, right? It can be. If, well, trading is a fast game. Um, you know, the way I do, it's a slow game. So. Right. Uh, it kind of depends on, I know people that are house flippers and I know a guy he flips over a hundred houses a year. He's got a system. He's got a business. He does great at it. That's kind of his thing. I know other people who would never want to flip a house. They just want to buy it and add another house to the asset column. So there is this, uh, there is this inner search to say, what are my strengths? What do I like? What do I don't like? And maybe it's not finding which asset class is best, but like you said, finding your asset class. What's the one that you really get pumped about and energized about? So maybe when we come back from break, I can talk a little bit about at least the process I see in people in choosing an asset class that's worked for them. You know, what's the process I, of choosing one? I would love that when we get back. I do want to, I do want to challenge you on one thing. You said yeah. that the way you do stocks, it's slow, but yeah, very. That's not true. When we, you and I first, <laughs> when we started doing it, in what five minutes, I had bought a stock. It had already uh, had potential for cash flow. It had dividends. You already had me. Uh, what's the word? Uh, buying <laughs> options and selling them within five minutes. You had cash. Doing it your nice, slow, boring way. I made money. Uh, okay, I see. Uh, oh, which is now. by the way, which Meaning is click by the way, pay, the name of money your course. Quick. Yeah, yes, yeah. The name of your course, zero to cash flow. Yeah, zero to cash flow. Yeah, you click and get paid is fast. I mean, the, yes. the money comes fast, but what I mean is the process. So we'll all see. Because right. I don't spend like all day doing. You know, I don't sit in front of my computer like a day trader all day. Those guys are like, you know, they're a different breed than me for sure. Oh, so they're not something I want to do. So, no. Yeah, let's uh, let's when we come back from break, let's talk about it. All right, that sounds great. Thanks, Andy. 
Okay, welcome back to Rich Dad's Stockcast with Andy Tanner, where we are going to learn Andy Tanner's investment DNA and how he is kicking ass in his asset classes. Man, I can't get that title right. Uh, before we uh, dig into Andy and his uh, pros and cons of his personality, let's make sure we remind you that in the description, you can get Andy's free gift, Zero to Cash Flow, which is kind of actually what we've been talking a lot about, in my opinion, uh, the speed of which a personality needs to invest in influenced me to be a stock investor. Let's see, let's see what in, uh, influenced Andy. What do, what do you got, Andy? What do you got for us? You know, I, <clears throat> it's interesting. I, I wasn't really built, I think, to be in stocks. I think I made so many mistakes because the habits that, that are required to do this are things that I just didn't have. And I, I fell into stocks really just wanting to, to buy assets. I, I originally wanted to do business, real estate. And the way I fell into stocks really wasn't a goal of mine. Uh, years and years ago, in the 90s, when they had the expansion of the World Wide Web, all of a sudden there was this thing called, you know, there's day tech and, and online investing and E-Trade. You know, it was all brand new back then. And all of a sudden a guy could do it himself. Well, there were all kinds of software programs and analytics programs. And I was a salesman and I was pretty good at sales. And I, someone says, hey, can you pitch this uh, stuff? Look like a good opportunity. And I started selling software. And associate trainings with it to, uh, to you know, as a pitch man. And uh, as I began to read Rich Dad Poor Dad and and began to shift my mind, say, hey, I should actually learn how to use this stuff, not just sell it. And so, as as a, a person who offered those products, I started learning those products, and it, I evolved from being a capital gain guy and a guy that tried to figure out trends and. You know, I, I evolved into, you know, and I settled as a cash flow investor. And I settled as a person who likes to collect dividends and sell premium. And I have students that do other things. I have day trading students. I have strictly option students. We can, there's a lot of paths to heaven. But what I found, Greg, is the reason I guess I, I believe in the personal development part is that was my experience. For example, the discipline that's required to let go of emotions and to not be greedy or too fearful. And a lot, and the consistency was a big problem with me because I was all over the place. You know, I, my attention, uh, ADD, you know, all over. So there was a, a lot of personal development that had to go on in terms of discipline and consistency and handling my emotions. Uh, cause I'm an emotional guy by default. And those, that DNA is not, uh, <laughs> not for investing, particularly in stocks where you don't have much control over prices. So uh, for me, it was a very much an evolution of something I wanted to do to, to make money. I wanted to invest, have money work for me. But I, I, I was really built more probably for, uh, for business and, and I was a good salesman naturally. Uh, you know, I know how to talk about deals and things like that. So the other thing I think I'd add, not to be too wordy with it, Greg, is a guy like Kenny, he does one thing. You know, he's really good at just, boom, that's what he does. He doesn't even do commercial. He Look, I do single-family residencies. Uh, that's what I do. That's what I've done. That's what I'm good at. That's my space. Uh, where I have other friends who they've done everything from single-family homes to apartment buildings to, you know, commercial stuff, you know, all over. Uh some people like to have a little bit of all the asset classes. Some people lock into one. I think there's not a single path to heaven, but I will tell you this. I think books are a great start for people who are interested in success. And then I think coaches and teachers are great for people who are committed to success. So the reason a book is a wise investment, you know, first of all, they're small. You know, you get a book for under $20 most of the time. That's a great way to start exploring an asset class, a minimum investment. And there's also like free courses. Like why would I offer zero cash flow, no charge? Gives the people a chance to dip their toe in those waters and learn a little bit and say, wow, this, I didn't know this could be, this could be me. I can see myself doing this or someone says, oh, no, it's not my thing. So the idea of, of introductory courses and initial readings of books, what a great way to find out if you're interested in that asset classes, and it kind of lights you up. Once you find you are, 
then pursue that and get more coaches, mentors, get a rich dad in your life uh, to teach you more about that. So that's that's how I think people might explore finding which asset class is right for them. So I, I do want to key in on one thing you said and it's a little sideways here, but you did say that you're kind of your natural personality is kind of all over. I, I'm the yeah. same way. Yeah. But that's the way you do stocks. Do do. I said do do. I hate do. <laughs> that's the way you <laughs> do do stock. That's what right. you do. When you do do, do, uh, do stocks. Right. Um I loved because I could, like I said, I could get involved right away. But then yeah. the first time I or when I learned the most basics, I remember buying a stock, setting up my option with you, and then I yeah. put on the calendar. Oh, okay. Do it again on this day. Like I could yeah. then go bing, 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 bing on all sorts of other things, you know. And then at the same time, you taught me how to to look at a business's uh, profit and loss statement and really how to yeah. understand the foundations. And that Which helped my like, to everything. Yeah, but with stocks, you get to do it with Ford. You get to do it with Coca Cola. Like yeah. you get to learn anything, anything you want. Whereas if you do real estate, oh, cool! I got to learn about a house. That's really neat. <laughs> like, like shut up. So with stocks, you got like I got to. It really did help me. I got to whatever I'm interested in. Doesn't matter. I could go look if there's a stock for that, and I could go look if that that stock made sense to use my options trading it. And so. I, man, I just fell in love with stocks because it did help my uh, wanting to learn so much about so many things. And the other asset classes kind of pushed, put me in a box. Does that make sense? It, you know, for me, and I think it's a, I don't think there's a right or wrong in that. Uh, you mentioned earlier, the more people I serve, the more effective I become. I, I don't know. There's, <clears throat> I have a, uh, <clears throat> I have a little single family home. One of the first ones we bought. And uh, <clears throat> we rented it to a, a retired military couple. <clears throat> and uh, he since passed. And his sweet, sweet wife, we never raised their rent, you know. And, and she lives in that home. And she loves that little home. And, and it's her place. And it's a roof over her head. And I take tremendous satisfaction in providing, you know, that opportunity for her to have a, a fair, low cost. You know, I, I like that arrangement and it, and it, you know as a touchy feely guy i guess i don't know I, I i care about the tenants i care about the people who who are there and the idea that i can also own apple and provide iphones to people in the world is simply to me various ways to serve but even in my my <clears throat> my part of the book business i don't sell near the books robert does but the fact that i can take what i think i've learned so far and do the best i can to share it with someone providing value and being having a producing mindset, there's almost no opportunity that I see where I can give something to someone that they see as more valuable than the dollars in their wallet, so they'll make that trade. Uh, I told my sons when they started their first lemonade stand, I said, people will only hand those dollars over if they feel the lemonade's worth more. Then otherwise, they wouldn't. You always have to give more than you can receive, and you make it up in volume. By the more people I serve, the more effective I become. And so whether it's real estate or stocks or business or whatever asset class you want, the idea is to serve others. And if you serve them to the point where that's worth more to them than a dollar, they're gladly going to make that exchange and they're happy to make that exchange. So, you know, real estate, stocks, I've never, I, I, I've never seen any of those asset classes that I haven't liked. Now, I've seen things that are hard about them. <laughs> Like business is brutal, like counterparty risk and trying to get along with others and leadership and, and, and competition and innovation. I mean, they constantly creating uh, business is brutally hard, but if you like that game, you like that game. I think that's the hard. I do think we can say this. I think you can rank them in terms of difficulty. And I think that, that if you go into like business on your own, Nothing needs more personal development than that. That'll find your weaknesses faster than anything. So I do think real estate is a tough thing if you're not good at raising capital. And so you either say, A, that's not my DNA, or you say, I want to become a better person at, at persuasion and selling and, and raising capital. That's the number one skill of an entrepreneur. So you either, you know, stocks, I think, is down lower than that. I think in ease of use. 
I think stocks to me are the easiest one of all. It's click and the money comes. That's that's way easy. Uh, and yet, because it's so easy, it can be dangerous because people can get involved. You don't have to raise ten million dollars uh, to to start in stocks. You can start with you know a couple thousand bucks, and so your your barrier to entry is lower in stocks. Uh, let me. I've said this many times. I'll tell you something about something unfortunate about that this asset class. There is no asset class that I know of with greater participation and less education than paper assets. There is no asset class with more people with more involvement and people that know less. And that's because of the 401k. People take their money, they put it in the 401k, they know nothing about stocks. So, you know, an, an average worker doesn't take his money and you know, go put it in one of Kenny's syndications every two weeks. Uh, right, they put right. it in stocks, and and it's it. That's one of the reasons that it's a bit of a train wreck for those guys. So yeah, I you know, I it, it, it's a fabulous discussion. It's something everyone should take to heart as you fill out your. You know, I have my calculator that shows people what they got to do to get out of the rat race. Well, you got to choose a vehicle. How are you going to do it? How are you going to serve people? You going to put a roof over their head? You going to sell them iPhones? You going to give them? gasoline gold silver how are you going to serve the world how are you going to do it so what's funny about this conversation is i feel like i'm selling you into stocks so let me let me try again andy i'm going to tell you why <laughs> stocks are better i'm going to give you two stories and and they're both so stupid so years ago i started a, a business it was a restaurant yeah and i went out and i got my investors and i got my investors from the restaurants I was working at, my best customers, they're like, hey, if you ever start a restaurant, blah, blah, blah. So I did. Well, it turns out one of my investors, I had no idea, was in the mafia. Oh, my right? goodness. I didn't know so, the story. Yeah. I mean, I knew you, you had a restaurant, but I didn't know it was. I didn't know you're funded by the mafia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't either until it was too late. I, this giant comes, comes to my restaurant to break my legs. So that's just one story. Andy, where you don't run into that with stocks, all right? No, you like, do. I will get. I will concede that. I've never had someone okay. show up to break my legs as a shareholder. Two, no. Two months ago, two months ago, one of my tenants, I should say, one of my wife's tenants, she gave this lady a chance. She, she, my wife sees this lady on the news. Terrible hardship story, right? Terrible, terrible. And so my wife says, "Come live at our place." I'll give you like half off and you don't have to need a security deposit, any of that. Right. My wife is a sweetest person ever. Guess what happened? Like, I don't know what it was two months ago. We get called from the cops because she did some drugs and ended up running all over the complex naked. I don't see that happening in the stocks either. So not, not in my, not in my experience. <laughs> right. So let me just say this, and this is actually, my favorite thing about stocks, both of those situations I made mistakes in. When I make a mistake in stocks, they're so agile that you can either get out of that mistake or turn that mistake into a win. And so yeah. I think if I'm trying to sell you on stocks, no mafia, no drugs, naked <laughs> ladies. And when I do make a mistake, I can correct it quickly. What do you think? So, so I'll I'll agree with you on this, and if I can, I'd like to. I just brought this up on my screen in front of in front of me here. I'm going to read something from Warren Buffett, and I'm going to I'm going to uh, see if it fits what you're talking about. Uh, he says the ultimate irony of the investment business is there's no question an obstetrician will deliver babies better than a husband or wife. If you take dentists as a whole, they remove teeth or fill teeth better if the patients try to do it themselves. Now listen to this, but in the investment world. Somebody who believes in American business, now listen to this, and will seek out the lowest way to participate in business and do it consistently will achieve results that exceed those of investment professionals a group. It's the only industry I can think of where professionals' efforts subtract value from the layman can do himself. Now, the most important thing, and it's it's in dashes, right? It's in dashes. And will seek out the lowest way to participate in business and do it consistently. What does it mean? For someone to seek out the lowest way to participate in business and be consistent, it means owning shares of stock. In other words, the reason I don't have the problems you just talked about is I'm not participating, uh, except in or, uh, I'm participating in the dividend. So, for example, I own some shares of Coca-Cola, 
And the only thing I do to participate is I receive the dividend. That's it. And, and it's the same as a syndication. Like with, with the syndication that I'm involved in, I receive a distribution. But I'm not involved in the day-to-day -day decisions. So whatever drama happens, whether it's streakers or legs breaking, uh, those are things that, uh, that, that I don't have to worry about. So, oh, Greg, we lost Greg. Oh, Greg, I hope he's okay. Our producer will reach out and make sure uh, that lightning hasn't struck his house or something. But looks like Greg's having technical difficulties. So I'll, I'll continue and, uh, and I'll wrap up the show. So in summary, you know, when someone asks me what are, what are the, uh, you know, what asset class is best or the famous, if you had $10,000, what you invested in right now, you know, what's the best place to put money? It's not a function of the asset class. It's a function of your personal development in these skills. That's just my opinion. Uh, that's what I found. And I will just say that the, the, the thing about stocks is, is if you want to participate in a low way, then you invest in stocks and get dividend. If you want to go a little more, you learn about options. Uh, and the same is true with any asset class. You can go as deep into that asset class or as shallow as suits your goals to get out of the rat race. So uh, we thank you for listening. I, I get the chance to read your comments. I enjoy many of them. Uh, you know, you can separate uh, as you read them, you know, who's what and what everyone's motives are. But we invite you to uh, click the link and check out Zero to Cash Flow. That's a great way to uh, dip your toe into at least what I do. It's a great example of how this can happen quickly. Won't be a billionaire overnight, by the way. It's not a. It's not click and get a billion dollars, but it is click and get some dollars and to get started. So if you've read Rich Dad Poor Dad and you say, "Gee, I'd like to have some some income uh, that's passive," Zero to Cash Flow shows you how to do that. So I hope you enjoyed the conversation. I give my appreciation to Greg and uh, I love being. Uh, involved with the Rich Dad family, uh, the mission to elevate the well-being, your well-being financially, uh, is a mission I believe in wholeheartedly. So with that, uh, we'll close the show. This has been the Stockcast, and thank the host, uh, Greg Arthur. I'm Andy Tanner. We'll see you next time. This podcast is a presentation of Rich Dad Media Network.